What's up guys, welcome back to the channel and today I'm going to be going over why I am diversifying my social media platforms. So on this channel there's a lot of travel stuff, uh, photography and filmmaking, van life and living on the road, aerial and time-lapse films, but I'm also starting to do more business type videos. So for those of you that don't know, I'm a full-time photographer, filmmaker, cinematographer, and I've been traveling the world for about four to five years now, making a full-time income through photography, filmmaking, social media promotion, basically capitalizing on social media platforms to build a business. In this video, I'm gonna be going over a bunch of stuff, and I've got a bunch of main topics, and then I'm gonna be talking on each of those. I'm gonna put timestamps somewhere right here or here, um, just so you guys can kind of skip ahead to certain parts if you only want to see certain things. So in this video, I'm gonna be going over the main social platforms, which in my opinion are Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Snapchat, an online blog, Pinterest, TikTok, Reddit, and LinkedIn, and Patreon. So there's 11. I'm also gonna be going over what type of content is best for each platform, which platforms I focused on for years, and kind of which platforms I slept on, which platforms I'm diversifying to, inspiration to diversify, and going all in to build a profitable and thriving business. All right, so real quick, I'm just gonna give a brief description of each social platform in case someone's not familiar with one of them, or they know what it is, but not much about it. So Instagram, you know, it's the place to share your photos. Mainly it is a photo sharing platform. Facebook is kind of the end all be all. They're kind of just in everything, you know, photo, video, blog type format. They're kind of just across the board, a little bit of everything. And a big thing of that is networking. YouTube for long format video sharing. Twitter, which is essentially turned into the most up-to-date news feed of what's going on in the world and a way to communicate with pretty much anyone directly at the click of a button. And Snapchat, I kind of view this one as just for friends and family and not so much as for business, but there is a lot of business potential there. Online blog, not necessarily a social media platform, but a huge opportunity to grow an online business. Uh, Pinterest is also a photo sharing platform. It's a little bit different than Instagram. Uh, I'm just diving into it, so I don't know as much about it, but I'm learning it and I'll be touching on this a little bit later on. And TikTok kind of took the world by storm like a year ago, and they are a short format video sharing platform. Reddit, I've never really used, but it's essentially a photo, I think maybe video sharing platform where you just kind of upvote or downvote things, but again, I've never used it. LinkedIn, which is where you can have a professional profile and you connect with like-minded professionals and potentially clients. And Patreon, where if you have an audience, this is where you're kind of like avid fans or audience can see certain kind of exclusives behind the scenes and additional content. So for the last four years or so, I've been traveling the world full-time, I've been doing photography and filmmaking full-time, but pretty much up until less than a year ago, the only platforms I was using were Instagram and Facebook, which are huge and they've both proven where you can build a huge, huge profitable business from, but there's so many other things out there. And I was so closed-minded, I was just like, you know, Instagram is where it's at, I'm gonna post on Instagram. And then Instagram's integration with Facebook just made it super easy to share those also on my business photo page on Facebook. So just kind of all in for years on Instagram and Facebook, but really nothing else. So I really kind of lost out on some things, but it was also a good learning experience and I've learned a lot from Instagram and Facebook and now I'm trying to take what I know to other platforms. There's just so many other incredible outlets to put your content on and there's so many different types of audiences. Some people prefer video, some people prefer photos, some people prefer reading, some people prefer listening. So it's really, you need to be taking advantage of all of these types of platforms to maximize your business and your potential. And that's one of the reasons why I'm diversifying furthermore now. And the reason I was kind of all in on Instagram and Facebook is just like, I guess my mind was set on those things and I saw people having success there where I guess I didn't see it in other places or I was just blind to it. But my mind just kind of works where when I set my mind on something, I'm just, I'm kind of just like all in on it and it's all I think about and it's all I do, which I think this is a super beneficial trait because I think you need to be all in on something if you truly want it to grow and build something that has an impact. But I think the downside to being all in on certain things like this and the way my mind works is that when other people give me ideas or opinions on what they think I should be doing or doing elsewhere, I'm kind of just stubborn to it and I kind of just shut it out and I just continue doing what I'm doing. So the mindset of just kind of going all in and being laser focused on something does have pros and cons. So kind of just a timeline of things as I am diversifying my platforms. So right now it is June 1st, 2020. And around mid-July in 2019, almost a year ago, that's when I decided to start doing YouTube and taking it seriously. I had posted some videos before this, but most of it was just old skateboarding videos. 
So kind of since July when I decided to go all in on YouTube, I've tested different amounts of how often I upload. I've done a minimum of once a week. I've, I've tested with twice a week, three times a week, every other day. And there was even one month where I uploaded a video every single day and it was so hard and it was so much to keep track of on top of traveling at that time. I was doing a road trip. It was kind of madness. And like I said, looking back on YouTube and the fact that I slept on it for so long, I definitely wish I had it because at the end of the day, I think YouTube's proven itself to do the most for creators opposed to any other platforms out there. Their YouTube partner program has made it so people can literally make full-time livings from just YouTube alone, where that's possible with every single other platform, but what YouTube has done the most for their creators, I think. Even if I just posted one or two videos over the last four or five years of traveling, I think I'd have a huge YouTube audience at this point, but I don't really like to live with regrets, so just hypothetically speaking, but you know, since July, I have been going all in and I've seen tons of growth in YouTube and I don't plan on t stopping anytime soon. And I also think YouTube's just super interesting because it's not instant gratification. It's probably the complete opposite from it. Whereas on Instagram or Facebook, you can post a photo, get immediate likes, immediate comments, immediate shares, and it's just kind of like a huge rush to see this and it's so awesome. YouTube, <laughs> you can post a video every day for six months and you might have three views per video, if that. But then as you create more and more and your content gets better and better and as YouTube sees how much time you're putting in on it, the algorithm will help you kind of take off at that point and then I think from that point is where YouTube becomes the most powerful platform. But I don't think a lot of people are interested in creating on it because up front there's just so much work with pretty much no return. Next up I want to talk about TikTok. And I think my first TikTok, I was on a road trip with Brian and it was probably August 2019. So about 10 months I'd say, around something like that, that I've been creating on TikTok. So I was road tripping with my buddy Brian for about a month and he kept telling me, Kev, you gotta get on TikTok, you gotta get on TikTok, you gotta post, everything can go viral so easy, it's so easy to grow, it's so easy to get views. And I was just like, yeah, yeah, whatever. But then midway through our road trip, uh, Gary Vaynerchuk posted something about TikTok and I'm gonna talk more on Gary in a few minutes. But when I saw this post from him, that was the day that I downloaded TikTok. So I kind of completely ignored Brian for a while. And then when Gary V said it, downloaded, started right then. Um, and I didn't take it quite seriously in the beginning, but then after you know a little bit of posting, maybe a few months, I had a video that hit over 2 million views and it was huge. And it was at this point when this video went viral that I was like, okay, TikTok, need to go all in, potential there is huge, and also the numbers of the app were growing so much. It was one of the fastest growing platforms out there. And now since then, I've been posting about two to five times a day to TikTok. Rarely I've missed a day. There are some days where I only post once, there's some days where I posted more than five times, but I'd say the average is about two to five times a day, and the tens of millions of new users every single month. So that's kind of why a few months ago I was like, all right, I need to be posting a lot, I need to take advantage of this opportunity. It's not every day an app comes out like this. All right, so after YouTube and TikTok, back to kind of now. So it's June 2020, and I've been creating and traveling the world for years now, but I kind of see myself at a point where I'm gonna be diversifying even further and even more. And it's just kind of like I always think, like I could be doing more, I know I'm doing a lot, I know I'm always moving, I'm a very fast-paced person, but I know I could be doing more, and I know that I'm not at my full potential or kind of my, my cap of what I can do. And I know that there's ways to kind of just maximize my content and diversify that content or kind of repurpose it for all these different platforms and then launch it on all of those as well. So I just wanted to be doing more and kind of making all of my platforms go full circle to where each one is piggybacking on the others and they're all kind of building my business slowly and together. So the kind of switch to even further diversify past Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and YouTube happened last month when I redid my entire website. Um, I've had two websites in the past, both made by friends, um, and I just kind of scrapped it and I was like, you know what, I need to start over and I need to be the one that makes it because I need to know the back end, how it runs, if something needs to be fixed, I need to be the one that does it. So I kind of switched over my website to Wix, completely redid it from scratch, and although I've never gotten a single job from my website alone, as a professional landscape photographer and filmmaker, a website and a portfolio is kind of just non-negotiable, like you have to have it. But when I did this, I did add a page for blogs. You know, <laughs> a few years ago, if you asked me if I'd ever see myself blogging, I would have told you you're crazy. But at the end of the day, it's not that crazy. You know, I have a journal that I write in, whatever from travels to experiences to goals to uh, things I want to check off and things I want to remember all go in here. So why not? 
kind of share my experiences of travel and living on the road and creating content in written form. You know, if I'm already doing it in so many other ways, I should be doing a blog as well. So kind of at the same time where I made a new website and a new blog, I also created a Pinterest account an Amazon influencer shop account, a Patreon account, and I guess technically a Twitter, but I don't really see myself using that that much unless I wanna reach out to someone for a specific reason. But now that I kind of decided to diversify my platforms and expand into different audiences, now I'm gonna be creating content full-time for Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Pinterest, TikTok, my blog, and my Patreon. So pretty much every single platform out there is an opportunity to reach a new audience. With each new platform, you can further your brand and take your business to new heights. And I'm not trying to downplay this or say that it's easy. Creating content for even a few platforms is a full-time job, but if you're gonna be expanding to all these platforms, most people that do this have teams of people behind them helping them keep up to this and keep up with the quota that they set for themselves and all this stuff. Like, it's no easy feat. But in the field of photo, video, and content creation, the field just gets more and more saturated by the day. So I think those that really put in that extra step, that extra effort, and just those that create for the most platforms, I think those are the ones that have the biggest chance to outperform others and succeed. Also, I wanna do a quick note on some applications you may not have heard of, and I'm sure there's a ton more, but stuff like Firework and Mox TV. So these are two platforms that reached out to me this year, mostly just repurposing stuff I've already posted for other platforms. And both of these were platforms where they pay out the creator, like kind of how YouTube does. And I did both of these for a few months, and I made a little bit of money from each, but then they both kind of died out. So I was like, okay, you know, I'm gonna take all these new platforms with a grain of salt, I'll try them out, but unless something is seriously taking off like TikTok, kind of take a second to hop on certain platforms because some platforms kind of go up and then they just go right back down. You also have to kind of maximize where you put your time. So I think before this kind of crazy boom in the digital age, when you would just make art in your room, show your friends and family, you'd have a few showings or galleries, and then all of a sudden have a huge audience and be and a successful business. I just think that those days are over unless you get really lucky with something. We are in the digital age and every single person with a phone can create. Anyone can tell a story and this is just the day and age that we live in. Times have changed and I think they're just continuing to change every single day. I think the ones that succeed in this type of business, in this field, are the ones that produce content for the most platforms. I think they're the ones that diversify their content into photos, short form videos, long form videos, uh, written text audio and all these other things. I think one of the biggest skills right now is being able to adapt and diversify where you're putting your content and where you're creating. So when I was creating my new website last month and kind of diversifying where I was creating and what platforms I was using, I was also reading the audiobook Crushing It by Gary Vee. And Gary Vee I've been following, I think since I got my first camera, so probably about four or five years now. But for some reason this is my first time reading his book even though it's been out for years. I think just because I assumed that I followed him on Instagram Facebook and YouTube that I would already kind of get all the knowledge that he put in his book, but he really dives deep into every single platform out there. And kind of the entire time I was listening to it, I was just thinking like, damn, I could be doing so much more. I could be creating in so many other outlets in so many different ways. And there's so many ways to maximize the potential and grow a business like this in all these different fields and platforms. Like I could grow a successful and thriving blog business, uh, YouTube business, uh, photography business and they're all under the same roof so this book kind of just really was like okay this is the time this is where I need to go all in on a bunch of different platforms I need to stop being so narrow-minded for what I'm creating for kind of also kind of a side note I want to touch on podcasts it's not necessarily a social media platform because podcasts are all over and they're on a bunch of different platforms but podcasts themselves is a huge, huge opportunity and business. And I think the world is just kind of gravitating more towards audio, like Google Home, Siri, Alexa, Amazon Echo, all this stuff. And I think the way to kind of maximize on audio is by doing a podcast. But right now, there's so much competition in the podcast space. I think I'm just going to wait till it's kind of down the road. I have more of an audience. And if I'm not home, I don't have this set. So since I'm traveling all the time, I don't really have the appropriate setup to do a podcast. The only really reason I'm home right now is because of quarantine and lockdown still. Also, I think diversifying the platforms I'm using isn't that big of a step in any direction as far as what I need to do and the amount of effort it takes. Because yes, I'm gonna be creating for all these platforms. I've been creating photos and videos for so many years now that when I started YouTube, most of my videos were just regurgitating years worth of content and initially they weren't filmed for youtube but i had all this stuff it's like okay i've got all this stuff like i can just you know make a ton of youtube videos 
And it's the same thing for blogs. Like I could turn any video or any hike or anything I've done into written text. And if I'm gonna be posting photos on Instagram, why not take another minute and post the same thing to Pinterest? You know, like I already have all the content and I'm gonna be continuing to shoot. So it's kind of just like a few extra steps. And I think the benefits outweigh the little bit of time put in just to make the content user friendly on a few more platforms. Now with stuff like iPhone 11s and Google Pixels, like everyone has the ability to take DSR level photos and 4K videos from their phone. So the competition couldn't be more saturated and it's just getting more saturated. So I think you really need to have an all in mindset and kind of just a long term view on things and just realize, you know, if you're building out all of these platforms and you're diversified across, let's say four, five or even six platforms, over time that could grow into something huge and creating content for as many platforms as you can consistently to succeed in this. Anyways, I hope you guys found some value in this. I'll leave links in the description down below to all these socials, my new website, just so you guys can kind of see what I'm working on, what I've been up to, and if you're just looking for some more ideas on how to create some of this stuff for these platforms yourself. Anyways, thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.